Hello and welcome, this is Dr. Andrew Jones and welcome to my video blog and this is going to be the inaugural episode, this is episode one. So I'm going to get right into it and these are going to be short little videos where you get a good chunk of information in terms of figuring out what's wrong with your dog or cat, how I go around figuring it out and how you can too and lastly a couple of pretty quick and easy solutions. So what we're going to talk about today is back pain. And what I want to use is use Jesse here, my older dog Jesse as an example, in particular because recently, just over a week ago, he had a very serious incidence of a back, back pain and a back injury. So what he showed up, what, up as, I'm just going to get him to stand up here. Oh, sorry little Jesse. So he, he, he got up in the morning, he had his head down like this, so his head is down. He was very, very reluctant to lift up his neck which is a pretty classic sign of some type of neck pain. And he had a fairly serious pain and on his foreleg. So he actually wasn't putting weight down on his leg. So initially, I think, and I would have had many clients in the past come in and they would suspect that there's some type of neck and uh, some type of leg injury because their dog is limping. Um, but the biggest sign that I noticed with Jesse is one, he was reluctant to get up in the morning. Two, as soon as he got up, he wouldn't put much weight at all on his foreleg. He went outside, he was really limping on it, but in particular, just really reluctant to move his neck from side to side in any way. And that's a real classic sign of some type of neck injury and neck pain. And when you're actually see, dealing with lameness as well on that front leg, it's called a root signature. So what that means is some of the main nerves that go down that front leg, such as the radial nerve that's applying this whole, the whole front limbs, I mean, they emanate, they start from the spinal cord. So that's suggesting there's some pinching or inflammation going on with one of those nerves. For sure that if your dog is in serious pain, there's serious discomfort, by all means, go ahead and get a veterinary exam. And I went ahead and I went and thoroughly examined Jesse. And what I did is I, good boy, you, I just had a good look at his eyes, his nose, I looked at his gums, so they're pretty pink. So I was pretty comfortable that we're primarily dealing with pain, but just, just gentle motion. I just cradled his, you can see here, I'm cradling his mouth, the side of his face, a little bit of gentle motion. He really resisted just bending his head side to side. And when I tried to flex his neck up at all, he yelped. Ooh. And that's what you would find or definitely your veterinarian would find if you had an exam. Good boy, Jesse, you. So in seeing that, I mean, there's a couple of, of things that you're going to want to do it come to mind. One is providing some type of pain relief. My initial thing I did with Jesse is, is me being a veterinarian, obviously I can treat my own dog at home. Um, and there's nothing stopping you from treating your own pets at home. You're obviously, you're completely in your rights to do so. To do a basic exam of your own dog or cat, make your best own judgment and perform a treatment. As I said, if you're not sure, by all means get a veterinary exam. But that being said, and after that, and if you're comfortable with your dog, they're still eating somewhat, they're still drinking somewhat, um, they're not showing in more serious neurologic signs in terms of, of being stumbling side to side, more serious signs of a back injury, then by all means, go ahead and consider some of these at-home remedies. So what are the first thing I did? I gave him some type of painkiller, and I started with something conventional. I gave him 325 milligrams of regular aspirin. I wanted to give him some initial pain relief. I follow that up with some Arnica. Here, Jesse. And here's some Arnica here. So I gave him three of these 30C capsules of Arnica. He took those pretty well. well um, here, let's pop a couple into you now. Fortunately, I have a number of homeopathics and Arnica is my most used homeopathic. So I have a couple of those here. So here's three of the capsules, and I just popped them in, just into his mouth, just held his mouth shut. Good boy, swallowed those pretty well. Good boy, there we go. And then, then the last thing I did is I did some acupressure, and I wanted to show you the two key acupressure points um, that you can be using on your own dog or your own cat if they have some type of back injury. So the first thing I did is I found the GV4 point, and to find that, I'm just gonna roll Jesse onto his side here. I, right here, he's lying on his side. Along the side of his belly, you can feel his last, his 13th rib right here. That's his last rib. 
straight up from that is the middle of his spine and there's the GV4 point and you can feel this depression and that's between L3 and L4 this is the lumbar vertebrae and you can feel the depression between those vertebrae and here I'm just gonna roll them around here so you can actually feel me putting on it I found his last rib gone straight up that's the GV4 point so I've got my middle finger my index finger held on that that on my left hand and the next point I found was one called the GV20 point. And that one is located, here's find the top of your dog's head, right in between his ears and just below the base of his ears, you'll feel this notch or this depression in the skull. And that's the GV4 point. Sorry, that's a GV20 point. So using my middle finger of the right hand or index finger of the right hand and my index finger here of the left hand, I just put moderate to firm pressure and I just held that point for 30 to 60 seconds. And when Jesse had this serious neck injury, and I did this five to six times throughout the day. So I gave him one dose of aspirin and that was it. And I mean, he was obviously serious discomfort. Um, I mean, he really, really, he really, really had, had either a serious neck spasm, perhaps even a, a partial disc prolapse because really, really uncomfortable. Regards to men, he needed some form of pain relief, something to decrease inflammation. So this is what I did for two days of acupressure. Here I am holding the GV4 point, the GV20 point. Did that twice, did that five times a day for two days. By day three, he essentially was normal. So there it is. There's a couple things you can be looking at doing if your dog or cat is in pain, they have some type of back injury. So thanks for watching episode one. Um, this is Dr. Andrew Jones.